Have you ever wondered if planes are fitted with a system to alert pilots of other aircraft whilst in flight? And if there is something to ensure a safe level of separation is maintained at all times? That's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. Welcome back to another video. My name is Deepak from Flying 101 and I release a weekly video related to flying, aircraft, aviation in general. And if you're interested in any of this, please click that subscribe button. Don't forget to press the bell notification so every time a new video is released, you'll be notified. Today we'll be talking about a subject of some significance. As we alluded to earlier in the intro, it's concerning how aircraft are able to maintain a safe level of separation whilst in flight. It's an onboard system and it's called TCAS. Stands for Traffic Alert and Collision Avoidance System. Now before we dive into how the system works, what it comprises of, let's take a quick second to understand why it's on board in the first place. TCAS was uh, mandated some years ago by the authorities after there were some accidents as a result of mid-air collisions. A safe level of separation was compromised and uh, mid-air collisions occurred um, which sadly led to crashes. And after that it was mandated by authorities to have a TCAS system fitted on aircraft that weigh more than 5,700 kilograms or that carry more than 19 passengers. So it's a very common system on board uh, aircraft today and we'll be exploring exactly what it comprises of and how the system works. So having looked at why TCAS is on board aircraft, now let's understand what TCAS actually does. Like we said earlier, TCAS stands for Traffic Alert and Collision Avoidance System and it's principally there to detect and display surrounding aircraft that have a transponder. It also computes the possibility of a collision threat and displays it. And the system also issues vertical speed orders in order to avoid a collision. Now, the TCAS system or the TCAS computer scans an area around the aircraft, just like an envelope around the aircraft. And that's depicted in this diagram over here. So we're talking about 30 to 80 nautical miles horizontally. The reason why we have this range is it, it's because it depends on the aircraft configuration. So different aircraft may have different ranges, but that's the typical range that a TCAS computer would be scanning the airspace horizontally, 30 to 80, 80 nautical miles. And vertically, we're looking at plus 9,900 to minus 9,900 feet. So 9,900 above and below, the aircraft. That's the vertical extent of the scan of the TCAS um, or the traffic rather. So the TCAS computer on an aircraft is actively scanning the airspace around it in this envelope to establish from other aircraft whether there is a risk of a potential collision. And it's using the transponder of the surrounding aircraft or the intruding aircraft. In our, our example over here, let's call it aircraft B as the intruding aircraft. The TCAS computer, which is the interrogator of aircraft A, is using the transponder of aircraft B, the intruding aircraft. Transponder is a subject for another video, but that's the device on an aircraft that's providing information to the TCAS computer of aircraft A. And the information provided is such as the bearing, so the heading of the direction in which this plane is going, the altitude that it's maintaining, again, for that, there are certain requirements to be met, such as it has to be a more Charlie or a more Sierra transponder, again, a subject for another day. The, uh, the rate of climb descent, the speed, etc. This information is being provided by the transponder of the intruding aircraft to aircraft A. And the TCAS computer takes all this information and on that basis, it computes the relative bearing or the heading of aircraft B it computes the rate of closure or the rate of separation and it also establishes the relative altitude of the intruding aircraft in relation to aircraft A. And then it uses this data to compute something called a CPA, a closest point of approach, which is like an envelope, a boundary, and the estimated time to it. So we're looking at aircraft B, which is intruding aircraft, it computes the closest point of approach to aircraft B and the amount of time or the estimated time to that particular point, the CPA. And depending on how close aircraft B or aircraft A get to that CPA, that point that's been computed by the computer over here, the TCAS computer, 
the system would then issue oral or visual warnings uh, and it may even give uh, something called an RA, a resolution advisory, to avoid a collision. So, having looked at the principle of how the TCAS uh, system works, now let's see how this information is presented to the pilots. All right, so here we have an image of something called a navigation display. It's part of the instrumentation system. And let's understand how the information is presented to the pilots using the various indications we have on the ND or the navigation display. So let's start off with the hollow white diamond, which is called uh, other intruders, as um, uh, the system would, uh, would, would classify the traffic. Uh, this kind of traffic is not posing any collision threat yet. Uh, it's non-proximate and horizontally it would be closer than 30 nautical miles from us. The numbers that you're seeing next to uh, the diamond, so one zero in this case, represents the relative altitude of this other aircraft. So it's 1000 feet above us and it's climbing as indicated by the up arrow. Next moving on to the, the solid white diamond over there, this kind of traffic would be called proximate. It still doesn't pose a collision threat. Horizontally, it would be within six nautical miles from us, and vertically, it would be plus minus 1,200 feet. So either 1,200 feet above or below uh, our aircraft. Uh, and uh, once again, this particular aircraft, the proximate is um, 1,000 feet below us, and the down arrow means that it's descending. Next, moving on to the solid amber circle. Now, this kind of an aircraft would be posing a potential collision threat. The estimated time to the closest point of approach at this point is about 40 seconds. So remember we talked about the CPA, which is being computed by the TCAS computer using the information that it's acquiring from the transponder of intruding aircraft. And on that basis, it computes something called a closest point of approach. And it then calculates the estimated time to it. So for potential collision threat kind of traffic, so as uh, represented by the solid ample circle here, we've got about 40 seconds in terms of this aircraft uh, reaching the closest point of approach. And finally, we've got the red solid square. Now this kind of an aircraft is posing a real collision threat. And the estimated time to the closest point of approach for this aircraft is about 25 seconds. Now, for the aircraft depicted by that amber circle, there will be some oral messages issued in the cockpit to alert the pilots of a potential collision threat. And for the traffic that's depicted by the red square, there would actually be a resolution advisory issued, which would call for the pilots to carry out certain maneuvers to avoid a collision. So once that traffic represented by the amber circle gets to about 25 seconds from the closest point of approach the warning is then escalated to something called a resolution advisory and from yellow it turns to that red solid square and at this point pilots would be required to carry out an evasive maneuver using the instructions provided by the TCAS computer so it may say things like climb descent or even maintain vertical speed to ensure that the aircraft doesn't change its altitude in relation to the other aircraft. Now remember that this intruder aircraft is also fitted with a TCAS computer. Both these are talking to one another and the orders that are being issued are done in coordination. So if this aircraft is in a climb and this one is in a descent, if the TCAS computer of aircraft A is telling it to descend when a resolution advisory is issued, the TCAS computer of aircraft B is going to ask you to climb or even may maintain vertical speed depending on the situation. But these two computers, the TCAS computers, are always working together to ensure that there are no conflicting instructions being given to the pilots. A golden rule that pilots are trained to follow is to always, always, always follow the instructions of a resolution advisory, even if it's at odds with air traffic control. So once a resolution advisory is issued, 
the pilots would be required to carry out an invasive maneuver and at this point they would be required to disconnect the autopilot and take over manually so they're now manually flying the aircraft and they are required to follow the orders issued by the TCA system so whether it's climbing descending or maintaining vertical speed whatever it is it's something the pilots would be required to follow without exception it's absolutely a must and there are some aircraft that have the autopilot system coupled to the TCAS computers. So the autopilot system will be able to follow the TCAS orders automatically and the pilots will just be required to monitor it and to make sure that the autopilot is doing what it's supposed to. If it's not, they're required to take over manually. So disconnect the autopilot and fly the aircraft manually, whatever is supposed to be done to obey the TCAS orders. All right, so once the TCAS computers of the aircraft in question have determined that a collision threat no longer exists, they would sound the words clear of conflict in the cockpit to, uh, to tell the pilots that the threat no longer exists and they can go back to their previous clearance, which may mean climbing, descending to the cleared altitude by air traffic control, um, or there may even be a uh, change to the clearance in coordination with the air traffic control. So once again, a quick recap. A TCAS computer is the interrogator, so it's acquiring information from other aircraft around it in this envelope. And the transponder is the provider of the information to the TCAS computer, which then uses all that information to compute something called a closest point of approach and the estimated time to it. And then depending on the position of other aircraft, it would display information and issue orders to avoid a collision. And we have two types of alerts where pilots are required to take action. We have a traffic alert where pilots would hear the words traffic traffic so that's the traffic depicted as a solid amber circle. At this point they're not carrying out an evasive maneuver yet but they're ready to take over should the situation escalate and once an aircraft gets to that stage where it's at about 25 seconds from the, clo the closest point of approach it then turns into a resolution advisory where pilots would be instructed to carry out an evasive maneuver so it may be climbing descending or maintaining vertical speed and remember the TCAS computers of both aircraft are talking to one another at all times to ensure that the escape maneuver is coordinated and of course the golden rule for the pilots is to follow the TCAS instructions without exception even if it's in conflict with an air traffic control clearance. That's the absolute golden rule. So to minimize the possibility of a nuisance traffic advisory or even a potential resolution advisory, there are procedures in place to prevent that. So let's consider aircraft A and B. This one's in a climb, aircraft B is in a descent. Let's say this was cleared to 25,000 feet. Aircraft B was cleared to 26,000 feet and it'll be flying exactly above aircraft A, which is in a climb. Um, the procedures, for example, for the pilots to follow would be when aircraft A is approaching within 2,000 feet of its cleared altitude, the vertical speed, so the rate at which the aircraft is climbing will need to be reduced to, let's say, 1,500 feet or 1,000 feet per minute. Aircraft B would be required to do the same. So when the rate of climb and the rate of descent is more gentle, the chances for an unwanted traffic advisory or, or a resolution advisory are mitigated. Um, they are not on a collision path because they are going to be flying at different altitudes. Aircraft B is going to be flying 1,000 feet above aircraft A. However, the computers, you know, if they see a very high rate of climb and a very high rate of descent for aircraft B, may consider the threat to be present and therefore may issue a traffic advisory or maybe even a resolution advisory if the rates are extremely high. So there we have it, our explanation of what a traffic alert and a collision avoidance system is all about. I hope that made some sense and it wasn't too hard to follow. Uh, these videos are meant to be quite simple uh, in terms of how the concepts are explained. Um, if you have any questions or if you have suggestions for a certain topic to be covered, please pop that below and I'll do my best to cover that in a future video. Once again, thanks very much for your time. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it along, and I look forward to seeing you next week when we shall talk about precision approaches. 
Thanks so much again, and I wish you a great day.